Oh, congratulations to Oklahoma. Um, they obviously took advantage of, uh, I think we gave up 19 free bases in the first four innings. Um, if you'd have told me we were going to score eight runs against their Friday starter, uh, Sandlin, who I think has been the Saturday guy, or sec uh, another weekend pitcher, and then the closer, I um, thought we'd had a good chance. But um, obviously, we didn't pitch well. We didn't, we didn't defend. Gave, just gave up a lot of free bases, and then they got the big hit. So you got to credit them, uh, the two big home runs, uh, when we set the table. So we'll just uh, have to wear it and be ready to go on Sunday. Okay, well, first we're going to have questions for the student athletes. If you have a question, please raise your hand and wait to be recognized. Give your name and your affiliation. This is for the benefit of both uh, the players, but also for the folks that are looking on the stream and on YouTube and every place else. Uh, raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. These start off with questions just for the student athletes. And right over here, I can't see. Mark Garland, CWS 247. Jordan, Trevor, uh, you guys did have a little bit of success hitting. How do you guys build on that and get ready for this next game right away? Quick turnaround. Trevor, why don't you start there? Yeah, I mean, we always know that the bats are going to show up, you know, not every game, but um, you can just ask that we put together good at bats and um, win pitches against, you know, good pitchers. And credit to their pitchers for, you know, filling up the strike zone all day. And that's what they did. But, um, you know, we know the bats are there and, and the runs will come with that. Jordan? You know, going off what Trevor had to say, uh, really just got to keep putting together and good at bats, just keep battling pit, pitch after pitch. Eventually you'll get to wear them out. And if not, you're going to help the guy behind you. And we keep helping each other, and that's the process and mindset that we take into every game. Okay, up here. Tra uh, Travis. Uh, Travis Brown with the Bryan College Station Eagle. Jordan, I know there was a lot of talk before the game about how big this ballpark plays. Playing in the center field and hitting that home run, did it feel like um, it was any other ballpark you played in? Yeah, I mean, it didn't feel like a, any bigger ballpark. It just felt like a normal ballpark. You know, going in, you don't think about those things. It's just a, another field. And so you just go in there with that same mentality and good things will happen. Okay, next question. Well, if that's it for the student athletes, thank you, and good luck. Good to go. A couple of days, y'all can go. Just go back to the Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Once again, uh, questions for Jim, and raise your hand, and we'll get a mic to you. Travis. Travis Brown of the Bryan College Station Eagle. Coach, uh, you went out and talked to Moo right before the, the Grand Slam. Was there a thought to, to pull him then? What was kind of the, the, the strategy in your mind there? <laughs> Pretty bad coaching visit. Gave up a Grand Slam on the next pitch. It's bad coaching. Uh, I was just trying to instill some confidence in him. You know, we, we'd had so many, you know, there were so many negative things. I was just trying to say, hey, man, just forget everything. If, I, if I'd brought you in right now with the bases loaded, you've been in this situation a thousand times, just execute pitches. So I was trying to show a little confidence in him, trying to, you know, definitely felt like, you know, Moo's been great for us all year. Um, you know, we just set the table too much. I mean, you just can't set the table. I mean, that's our – Moo's our best fielding pitcher. He's a really good fielding pitcher and made two errors. So, you know, you've combined that with the hit batters and the walks. And, I mean, what do you think is going to happen? So, but, yeah, that's – I was just trying to pump him up a little bit. Didn't go our way. Mark, oh, back over here. Mitchell Kutcher, CWS 247. Coach, what's your message to the pitching staff after a game like that today as you prepare for the next game? I mean, there's, this is not – you're not going to make some grand change. You, you are who you are, right? So, you know, my only message will be is it would, it would be nice to see – and we've seen it. You know, Moo didn't have a good day today. He's normally been pretty gritty. But you saw the quality of our bats against the really good pitcher, regardless of the score, the, the grit, the – I mean, Austin Bowes had that bat where he was down 0-2 and stayed in it and lined out to the second baseman like that. That exemplifies our team. It doesn't necessarily exemplify all the pitching staff, unfortunately. And we, in, in order for us to, to uh, you know, play deep into this tournament, it's, someone's going to have to give us something, you know. And uh, I think Micah Dallas is capable of doing that. I know Prager is. I know Rudis is. So there's enough guys down there for us to, to battle in this thing. But we just can't, we can't give away free bases. It doesn't matter if the game's played in, you know, in this ballpark at Bellevue East, it doesn't matter. 
You know, it's bad baseball. And you, you play bad baseball, you're going to get your tail kicked. Okay, right here. Uh, ben Peck, Kags, um, and Kyle Station. Coach, uh, just, you know, with this format, having the day off tomorrow, um, facing elimination, what's your message to the guys having been here before to not, I guess, dwell on it as opposed to normal weekend, you'd be able to maybe get back out there quicker and shake it off? Yeah, it definitely stinks not getting to play tomorrow. You know, there's no doubt about that. I mean, al although the rest is, is, is worthwhile. So um, the message is going to be we still have to be on a one-game win streak. We've got to find a way to get, win one game and, and then worry about that after the fact. Um, there's, all kind, there's been all kinds of different stories in this, ser in this College World Series for many, many years. And we can either cower down and put our tail between our legs and go back to College Station, or we can fight. My money's on our guys fighting. Whether that results in a win or a loss, I don't know, but uh, I guess that's what I'll tell them. Okay, we'll go right here and then over there. Evan Bland, Omaha World Herald coach. I know there was a lot of curiosity about how power would play in this park, yeah. especially with how the balls have been flying out in college baseball this year. What's your read on that yeah. after one game? Well, the ball was carrying in batting practice the last two days to right field, that's for sure. I think all the balls that were hit for home runs today were those were legitimate home runs in, in just about any park, both the one two we hit and the two they hit. Um, Ball's definitely changed. Uh, there's, I mean, I'm not a big conspiracy theory guy, but there are a lot of coaches out there that think the ball has changed a lot this, this particular season. Um, I don't know enough about the science to say that that's the case or not, but uh, there's no question whether it be older players or lack of good pitchers, uh, the, ball's, the ball's flying everywhere uh, this year. Back over here to the left. Ryan Broninger, Texas coach, went to Wyatt Tucker. Uh, first time he's pitched in like five weeks and, and really kind of bridged the gap, kept you guys in the game. What did you, you think of his performance? Yeah, he did a really nice job once he settled in, started throwing his breaking ball for strikes. And once he started throwing his breaking ball for strikes, he got his fastball down. So he gave us, what, three or four zeros there? Yeah, uh, three or four zeros there in the middle innings. Um, and then when we got it to four runs, that was a long inning. I felt like, honestly, just felt like I wanted to get finish him with – having a lot of confidence because for us to stay in this thing for a while now, maybe he can come back, you know, three, in two or three days and, and really give us something and because and he, he did a uh, really nice job. Okay, Travis. Coach Travis Brown with the Eagle. Um, with Detmer, was it just a matter of not having his, his secondary stuff? Because it seemed like he was able to get ahead with, with the fastball early, but just wasn't able to get that punch out or, or get that ground out. Yeah, I mean, he had – he walked a leadoff hitter after getting the two strikes, and then on an 0-2 pitch, he – just left the breaking ball up that Graham hit the right field, right? Uh, we got out of that inning with one run, and then I think all seven runs in the second inning were scored with two outs. And two strikes a lot of times. We hit, hit, hit the nine-hole hitter on an 0-2 pitch. Um, yeah, I mean, just couldn't, couldn't get off the field. Okay, who we got? Ben? Uh, Coach Ben Peck, KX. Uh, uh, with Cortez, I know he had that moment where it looked like he was shaking up a little bit, and then um, – you know, batter got on, so y'all took him out. But uh, do you have a sense of kind of where he's at physically? Uh, he said it was something with his neck, which he's he's had he hadn't had any arm issues all year. Uh, had a little hamstring issue. That's why I went out there. I thought maybe it was hamstring was bothering him, but I, I don't know. I mean, he just came out of nowhere, and then he said he felt fine, still still throwing 95 miles an hour. Uh, was moderately throwing strikes, but the, obviously the next pitch he almost killed Pettis. So um, sorry. Tell Kendall we said sorry. Okay, any more questions for Jim? Okay, right. see you. See you. Thank you. Thank you.